off we go. Right, so um, my uh, question is, um, hip hop and punk music, how are they both judged by society and how are they actually on common ground with each other? So um, first off, what is punk music? Um, it started off as quite simple and raw music, uh, it's like rock style, um, and the musicians in it weren't very technical and it was more about having a, a kind of raw attitude and look uh, with appearance. Um, there's two types, uh, obviously one being the first. Like, uh, which was, like I said, the raw kind of sound, and then there's a new one, a new wave that's um, much cleaner with the sound appearance, uh, but they still share the same like attributes. Um, how it was created and where, uh, this is debated as uh, people have got different opinions on what punk actually is, so. Um, they have different opinions on who actually started it, so who were the first band. Um, and the first kind of term for punk was originally used in uh, America during the 60s for garage musicians, which were um, obviously had this limited skill skill set, um, and the music was quite raw and uh, simple. Um, an example being the band The Sonics, who started up without much knowledge of um, playing our skill with their instruments, uh, yet they still played gigs and went at it even though they weren't amazing or anything or had much um, knowledge in it. Um, in the 60s, in Detroit, in the US, uh, more bands started to appear, uh, such as MC5 and the Stooges, um, and they kept this garage style. Um, and their lyrics are crude and they had a raw stage presence. Uh, and also the gigs were violent, which uh, caught a lot of attention with the public communities. Um, although this is considered the first by some people, the first real concrete scene of punk music uh, was in New York during the mid-70s. Uh, so this is bands like the Ramones, the Ramones, Heartbreakers uh, and Talking Heads, uh, and they all played in the Bowery District, which created a scene there between them. Um, and whilst all this was happening as well, it also caught on in England, uh, which was a similar background as well, the garage kind of thing. Um, but the main reason for it starting was because of uh, the political and economical state of uh, Britain at the time. Uh, obviously it was very bad, the unemployment rate was high, uh, so the youth obviously didn't have jobs, so they were angry, frustrated, quite rebellious, uh, which gave them a lot of strong opinions. So with not much to do, they got creative with it, started to let into this punk style, um, and even created a style and fashion for themselves. It was different from the American one. Um, and out of this came a shop named Sex, uh, owned by a man named Malcolm McLaren, who would be very influential in the punk scene. Um, in the midst of all this happening, he uh, flew to America to involve himself in the punk scene there, um, and he tried to sell the clothing from the shop he had. He tried to sell the style to them, but uh, it didn't work. So he returned to England um, and he was determined to get the style out there and known. Um, so he turned his attention to people that were coming into his shop that obviously liked the style. And um, these youth, they were youths, obviously. Um, and it ended up being like a project. Uh, and a band found out of it because that, that was the idea to get a band that could sell this style, um, and that ended up being the Sex Pistols. Um, they went out there and started to play gigs, uh, gigs
gained quite a lot of fans quickly because all around Britain there was a lot of views that were in the same situation and kind of like the rebellious style of it. Um, and a group who became known as the Bromley con contingent, contingent, sorry, um, went to a large amount of these Sex Pistol shows um, and just followed them through it and it inspired them to do the same. And uh, all of this influence that was going round um, ended up hitting the London punk scene. And this brought out bands like uh, The Clash, uh, The Slips, Generation X and other stuff. So that's kind of just a quick thing on punk. Um, so what is hip hop? Um, again, there are two main types. Uh, and that being old school and new school. And the old school is quite identifiable by its drum, or, drum orientated, funky, kind of hard hitting style. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it's quite a, how do you say it, like, Aggressive. it could appeal to a lot of people. It wasn't anything that was nasty in a way or anything, it was something they could all relate to um, and it was made specifically really, not at first so much but it went on to be made specifically so people would dance to it um, and rap over. Uh, New School is much more about songs, uh, the actual songs they make, not so much about the audience being able to dance to it. Um, it was just more of a fresh take on it, um, but obviously because it got more mainstream, people couldn't really dance at a big stadium gig. You know, it wasn't that, that was a focus early on. Uh, so, how was it created? Um, the real birthplace of it is considered to be uh, the South Bronx quarter of New York in the 60s, which was one of the poorest places in New York at the time. Um, Although it was considered to be the starting point, it wasn't called hip hop at the time, it was just, it's obviously a new thing coming up, so. Um, in 1967, a man named Clive Campbell uh, came from Jamaica to the South Bronx and took part in this music scene. And um, he was a DJ around there, he became a DJ around there um, and gained the name Cool Herc. Um, in Jamaica, uh, DJ meant master of the music system. Uh, he would organise parties announcing the tracks when he was playing them as a DJ, um, one into another, so he would play a song and then the next one would be coming up and then he'd announce the name of it. And yeah. uh, on top of this, when the tracks were playing, because quite a lot of them were instrumental tracks, so he'd uh, sing rhythmic lyrics over the, on the spot over the songs um, and people caught on to it, started doing it themselves and then it gained the name rap or rapping. Um, it also spawned the style of dancing um, because Cool Herc noticed that people danced during these drum breaks specifically um, and he would repeat these drum breaks so they could dance to them. And uh, these dance, the people who danced during them uh, got nicknamed B-Boys or Break Boys, um, obviously because they danced during the drum breaks. Um, and obviously the, the dance he did earned the name Break Dancing. Uh, another man named Kevin Donovan, or African uh, Bombata, formed a group called the Zulu Nation, which were a team of break dancers at first. Uh, and it eventually grew into an organisation which included rappers, DJs, graffiti artists and breakdancers. Um, and the Zula Nation and Bambata uh, integrated these four styles into hip hop, uh, which eventually became the standard kind of thing that everyone did within that scene. Um, so that's kind of it. It's just a brief thing on hip hop. and. Uh, so, what similarities do hip-hop and punk actually have? Although they sound totally different, 
uh, in like every single way, um, they do actually have some similarities. So, first of all, like I said, they both come from poor parts, depressed parts in the society, um, both taking on the negative effect and being the youth that took all of this, all of this in. Um, as hip hop evolved, became more lyric orientated and um, the songs were quite about the harshness of living in these societies and the punk punk started off like this already talking about these sort of things so that's another similarity they both shared the same opinions on how they both lived and um, politics and all that sort of thing um, they were all they were both also looked down on the society they lived in as the rebellious people, the outcasts sort of thing. Um, and they were basically just looked down upon. So they were these well known uh, like genres or scenes, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, how the two actually came together at one point, uh, the main bridge that started it off was uh, Fred Brathwaite, or Fab Five Freddy. Uh, he was a graffiti artist in the hip hop scene and uh, travelled New York exploring um, all the art around town. And during his travels in Upper Manhattan, he caught wind of uh, the punk new wave scene um, and he was interested because he'd heard about what they were about and that sort of thing so he decided that he'd approach them and say well we've both got the same energy about it and uh, the connection and everything and he felt this, they'd feel the same if he, he asked them so we did um, approach this uh, punk new wave scene and uh, he talked to them about it and they felt the same so they started introducing other people from the scene together which merged them together in a way. Um, and Freddie met the band Blondie and quite frequently uh, hung around with them. Um, and the band Blondie caught onto his style, like the way he talked, so the slang he was using, just the stuff he was referring to. And uh, they actually made a song that had a part practically dedicated to him, um, which was a rap. It was it was a rap, but it wasn't like a good one really. But um, it was made up from slang words that Freddie had used around them, and uh, that they just took on. Uh, song was Rapture, by the way, and it built a bridge between the new wave scene and hip hop. Not so much punk because Blondie were a punk band. Um, Hip hop and punk new wave, they came to uh, came together through things like Freddie meeting people in those scenes and introducing other people, and uh, just not so much at first, but collaborations came out of it and people started working together in it. So the genres really came together as one, um, and obviously through that they started hanging about in the same places, the same clubs. Um, not so much, probably not enjoying each other's music as much as they all individually do, but they, they would hang around with each other. Um, and eventually, it was quite sudden, not sudden, but quick, it, you know, it didn't take long before the two genres started to evolve and move on and just grow apart, really, um, and go into newer styles. So, um, modern punk music and how it's society reacts to them now. Um, as punk evolved, it went from quite a raw, crude sound and look, appearance, to quite clean cut, tidier, tighter music. Uh, so, bands like Green Day and The Offspring are a good example when compared to bands like The Sex Pistols or The, the Ramones. Uh, so, obviously, if you listen to a Green Day song, the vocals are cleaner, tighter with the song, all the instruments are tighter. Whereas I say, you listen to a Sex Pistols song, it's quite noisy in a way. It's very raw and it's not as clean and tidy as 
you, you'd know if you listen to the two. Um, so society now is much more accepting of newer punk than early punk, obviously because early punk is obviously so raw and quite shocking um, that people, not everyone, let on to it because not everyone could relate to it. Um, so this cleaned up sound would obviously not offend anyone in a way, you know, um, and make it more appealing to a, a more mainstream audience. Uh, so th the similarities are the similar sound, you know, the guitars, drums, it's kind of a basic band setup. they've got that. Uh, the style is still quite um, very similar, so like denim clothes and it's all similar style. Um, the attitude as well, that it's still quite rebellious. It's not, you know, they've not turned into like a pop band or anything. It's, it's still quite rebellious, and the influences are clear. There, you know, it's quite hard-driven music, you know. Um, so hip hop music now, and how society reacts to that. Um, hip hop changed quite quickly, just probably about a decade or two later than when it started. Um, from being about interacting with the audience, so the DJ playing music for the audience to dance to, and it's you know not a big place but quite a small place, um, to being more about an act being on stage and the audience just coming to watch them, and not the music being played for the audience to say them to dance to. It's more about the the artists being on stage, not so much. The, um, the audience taking part in it. Um, although it did become mainstream through the years, it didn't really soften up. Like it didn't really become cleaner or anything like that, like punk did. Um, it actually kind of got harder and grittier with it, with its sound. It was more um, the 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 lyrics that were in it were the same as like punk was about the harsh realities they were living in. Um, and again, people could relate to this sort of thing. It was it was the same sort of thing with punk, with people relating to it. And um, being like that sort of thing, not, um, not so much about just instrumental music. It was more about um, the actual lyrics within the music and the darker side of it all, really. It, it got a lot darker as it went on. Um, and it's still viewed now by society as quite um, an underground sound uh, kind of thing, so... Not a bad thing, but like... Sort of an oppressed kind of thing. Um, quite... Like I said, I don't... It's, underground but not something everyone is into even though it's got more popular over the years it's not um its attitude is the same um, so for a conclusion um i would say that the influences that they both have so the starting points the reason why they both started up was obviously because um they were in the depressed parts of the societies and the poor parts, and it was like a revolution in a way for themselves to do something. Um, Roth came from these bad parts and made something out of it, so music and parties sort of thing. Um, they're on common ground because, yeah, like I said, they both started the same and they're both kind of around for the same reason. Not so much punk now, because that's more um, about not so much the bad parts of society. It's not really about that anymore. It's kind of just about um, I don't know really what is it going about. <laughs> I don't really listen to it now, so but um. Wow, man.
Mine's gone. <laughs> right, okay. It's fine. Anyone got any questions? <laughs> Go, Josh. Um, you know, you spoke about was it Clive Campbell, mm. the film was called. Did it, uh, coming over from Jamaica, was he playing kind of like reggae or, or punk or something? Yeah, that's sort of, yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff, yeah. Is that kind of like, is that like what birthed like the sound of like hip hop instrumentals or is that? Um, kind of, yeah, I think it built it because I think people are already doing that anyway. Um, not so much instrumental, but just playing the songs as DJs. Yeah. Because it was, it was already known at that point that DJs were around. It wasn't uh, something he brought over that was new. Ah, cool. Any more? Okay, thank you very much.